Praise God, Prayer Valley family. Uh, so good to be spending the evening with you tonight, preaching and studying the Word of God. And I'm so excited about the things that God is doing and what's unfolding in our lives. Uh, we really need to pay close attention to what's happening all around us. I believe that this is a real precursor to things to come. Yes. And uh, we need to use a lot of wisdom in the decisions we make. Um, what we're yielding to and what we're not yielding to. We really need to pay close attention. And I know that people are getting weary. You know, they're getting, uh, they're getting wore down, so to speak. People are gradually getting wore down. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the plan of the enemy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bringing a word tonight about uh, not, not really allowing yourself to burn out and wear down. But before I do, I want to let you know that this Sunday, this coming Sunday, August 15th, is our annual baptism, all right, at Caswell uh, Park, out there in the in the the lake in the river out there. Yeah, and we always have a good time. So uh, it's at 10 a.m. We won't be having church at the church. We will be having service worship uh, at Caswell Park at 10 a.m. And we're gonna have a, a a big picnic together. We're gonna be baptizing together. We're gonna be fellowshipping together, having a great time. We always have the best time out there. And I know that a lot of people have been sick and going through right. things, uh, but m everybody's well. Most most everybody I know is well and yes. past everything. So let's get out there and have a good time. Yeah. Everyone's invited. Invite yes. your friends, Invite your somebody. family. Come out and throw the Frisbee. Have a good time. Come out and fellowship with us. Uh, we're going to be, like I said, if you want to be baptized, just come on out and get yourself on the list. If you know people that want to be baptized, bring them out with you. Yes, it's easy to get to. It's on Austin Road, 28000 in Ripon, and it dead end, so you can't miss Caswell Park. Make sure you bring plenty to drink. Make sure you bring chairs or blankets, change of clothes. We're going to have an awesome time. I yeah. can't wait. And we got a lot of food. A lot of food. I mean, we bought, Beth and I bought a lot of food, so please... Show up and bring people with you. Yes. And uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And, and it's we're been gonna, a while. I believe the power of God is going to fall. Listen, every time we baptize people, people come up filled with the Holy Spirit. Not every time, but you know what I mean. Right. Every time we do a baptism. We end up getting the whole park, actually. Yeah. We, last <laughs> time we went out there with like 15 people and ended up baptizing yeah. 43 people. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen God do miraculous things. Yes. Heal families. We've seen people come up praying in the Holy Ghost. Seen people come up with a glow on glow and just changed, completely changed. Amen. Yes. And uh, I even have a gift for someone uh, that Dr. David Norris bought, and and uh, for someone being baptized that I'm going to give that Amen. to them. Thanks so I'm God. bringing a surprise gift for somebody. Amen. Amen. And uh, you know, don't 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 stay home. Come on out don't and fellowship. Out. Don't listen to the fear mongers. Don't listen yes. to the lies. All right, and listen to the Lord. We're being careful. We're being smart. Amen. And uh, we're we're not, but we're not going to let. We're not absolutely not going to let this tyrannical <coughs> government dictate to us. It's That's not right. going to happen. That's right. There will be war. Amen. War. And what I mean by war is there will be spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. And it's already going on. Uh, you know we. Wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. We The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal but mighty through right. God to the pulling down of strongholds. We war in the spirit. There you go. You want to see uh, you want to see victory, begin to war in the spirit, and you'll begin to see things change. Amen? Amen. Hey, listen, guys. God has really dropped something in my spirit. Uh, I want to challenge you to get your Bibles and open your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Timothy. And I'm going to read a little bit, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to minister what the Lord has dropped in my spirit. I know the Lord has dropped some stuff in Pastor Beth's spirit. Yes. And uh, we've been talking today. Actually, we talk all week, but uh, we've been talking today. And she said, what has the Lord really been dropping in your spirit? And I said, well, I'll tell you when we get home. We were driving, and when we got home, I came in and talked to her and told her. And she said, that's, that's awesome. That's what God, and I know, she knew exactly what God was saying to her the same time God was speaking to me. So turn your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to begin reading. Father, we thank you for your word. Yes, Lord. Let your anointing go into everyone's homes, their cars, wherever they're listening or watching. 
And Lord, minister to them. Minister to them because the devil has been ministering to your people, God. Yes. And I pray that you minister to them tonight, God. Yes. The enemy's been lying to them. The enemy's been deceiving them. The enemy's been gripping them with fear. The enemy has been manipulating them. And Lord, tonight I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the anointing of God goes in and just de destroys the yokes of bondage, yes. the lies that the enemy is pouring out on people, the abomination that he's pouring out on people. And I pray, God, that you just begin to bring peace back into their lives. So tonight, yes. I want to read this out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Now that's powerful just right there. Yes. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Man, he, he's sending something there. Paul's sending something. Paul is an ambassador, an apostle. Uh, he's walking in, in the will of the Lord, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says to Timothy, my, 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 my dearly beloved son. These are the things we have to do. We have to start yeah. declaring and decreeing and speaking God's word like people yes. of authority. Instead of asking like we're begging God to do something. God, do this, yeah. do this, do this. Yeah. Paul wasn't like, God, do this. Paul was, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. To you, Timothy, grace, mercy, and peace. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with, pure, with a pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance yes. of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. He's saying, I want to see you because I know you're hurting. I know, I, I'm, I'm mindful yes. of your tears yes. that I may be filled with joy. When I, when I call to remembrance the, unfa the unfeigned faith that is in thee, that is in you. When I think about the faith in you, Timothy, right? right? When I think about the faith yeah. in you, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it's also in thee. Amen? Amen. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be thou therefore not ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Think about that, the afflictions yes. of the In other words, don't try to get out of the burden or the weight of what this gospel is costing. Right. People are trying to, they're denying, they're becoming deniers of Christ. Yes. Because they're like, this is too hard. It's scary. This is too rough. I, <coughs> I can't go to church. I can't serve the Lord. I can't lift my hands. I can't sit next to people because they may be sick. Fear. I can't be, you know, I can't, I can't lay hands on anybody. I can't witness. I can't go around my family. I can't this, I can't. And it's all about fear. That's you know, it. it's all about it's fear. fear. Sickness is real. There's no doubt. COVID is real. So is the flu. So, are, so is cancer. All this stuff, cancer. these are all attacks mm -hmm. from the devil. Yeah. They're all real. And, you know, we've had some people really sick. Thomas Ford and, and Gabriel Silva. And Lori. Uh, Grandma Joyce uh, Walker and, and Loy Miller. Yeah. Uh, and more people. I was super sick. Kelsey was super sick uh, a few months back. We know that it's real. I'm not making light of the warfare of the sickness I'm making what I'm saying is is that it's time for us to fight back it's time for us to stand up and stop being wimp mamby pamby sissified Christians we're supposed to be men and women of God children of the most high you know I mean we're supposed to be men and women like you know like Samson yes. who, who took the jawbone of an ass and slay a thousand men right we're supposed to be people that call the things that aren't as though they are we're right. supposed to lay hands on the sick and they recover. We're supposed to pray the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. We're supposed to speak the will of God, the word of God, yes. into existence. And instead, we're cowering down. I don't know about the rest of you, but 
I'm getting tired of being tired and exhausted of being exhausted. Amen? Amen. Because of the unrelinquishing garbage that we are exposed to all day long. And that's what it is. It is an unrelinquishing garbage. It's, it, listen, the crap is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and that's why I read this portion of scripture because at this point in time, Timothy was starting to feel burnout. He was yeah. feeling the weight. Yeah. He was tired. He was feeling, you know, the weight of pastoring the church or being a Christian and the persecution and the, 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 the taunting and the, 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 the things that they had to miss out on and hide. You know, they, they weren't respected as part of the culture and the civilization. They weren't respected. They were looked down upon. They were, they were ostracized. They were having to hide. They were, they were eating bread in the shack. Yes. Yes. When everybody else was eating steak in the park. Right. Right? Yeah. Now, we're not there yet. But, man, what are you guys going to do? I mean, you can't even walk with the, the, the foot soldiers. And pretty soon, we're going to have to run with the horsemen. Wow. If yeah. we're soldiers and we're cowering down so easily. Yeah. I mean, we can't even pray for a minute. Jesus, you know, went, yes. the Bible says that Jesus went over after preaching and, and, and the, all the disciples laid down yes. to take an, uh, a rest. And Jesus went a little farther and began to pray. They all fell asleep. And he come back. You know, Pastor Mike yeah. was talking about this. And they yes. were all asleeping. And he goes, couldn't you guys even tarry for an hour? I mean, That's what's up? It. It's true. And they fall asleep again. Right? That's people for you. Yeah. So I read this portion of scripture because Timothy was tired. He was reaching burnout. And you know, you all know that term, burnout, burnout, burnout. Burnout, it's a place that we can experience when we're in high stress or high warfare or high difficulties. We get discouraged. We get tired. We just get worn out. We get worn down by the constant battle of life itself and the attack of the enemy. The Bible tells us that the enemy will send ministering spirits. The word ministering, the word minister is to like serve. Yeah. They will send spirits to serve your flesh. They will tell you what you want to hear. Misery loves company. They will feed your fear. They will feed your fear. When you got fear, they'll come along and feed it. You ever be getting over something that you've been struggling with and boom, there it is. Like, oh, 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 it's right back in your face. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. the enemy. That's how he works. You be gaining courage. You know, be of good courage for I have overcome. You know, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And, and be a man of courage and be, be strong and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, you start, you, you start trusting your feelings. Or you turn on the, the television or the radio and you hear this and you hear that. And all of a sudden you're back in the condition that you were, you know, before you started praying. We get worn down. But really burnout is a term that means like frustrated or exhausted or perplexed or tired. You know, Paul right. said we get perplexed, yes, but we don't give up, right? Mm -hmm. we, right? We may we may be crushed, right? Yeah. But we're not cast out. Right. Right? I mean, I'm not going to read the scripture, but it, it, it burnout, it causes a lack of motivation uh, and it begins to override our motivation. We begin to get like we don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like going to church. Right. You know, we haven't went to church. I don't feel like going to church. I want to rest today. I don't feel like praising God. I don't feel like I have any joy. I don't feel like I have any peace. I don't feel good. Some of y'all never feel good. That's that, that, and, 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 and you shouldn't feel good because you're ugly. No, just kidding. Uh, some people never feel good. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. It's just true. There's an ugliness to people like that. Amen. <laughs> you know, day after day, week after week, Satan is working overtime. Overtime, big time. On your motivation. Working yes. overtime against your faith. Working yes. overtime against your hunger and thirst for righteousness. He does all he can to apply pressure to your lives. You know, I had somebody say to me one time, I can't even have a savings account because every time I get a little bit ahead, the enemy attacks and the car breaks down or the, you know, or the kids need a, a yeah. new filling in their tooth or, hello, I can't, I, I can't get ahead. I can't get ahead. Honey, you was ahead the minute you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's true. You're just looking for the world 
you're looking to the world to get ahead. You're looking to get ahead in this world, and you know, and, and you need to stop listening to all the m -m 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 money preachers and start listening to Holy Ghost preachers. Amen. There you go. You need to stop. Listen, God wants you to prosper. Prosper prosperity inv involves it. It involves finances, but it involves way more than finances. Right. Amen. Amen. So, so God wants you to prosper. So the enemy does all he can to pressure your lives out of prosperity. He even comes to pressure your life in a way that we become lukewarm in our Christianity. In fact, it's especially in our Christianity that I see the effects of the pressure that the enemy puts on people. It's in their walk with God. Right. Right. People are yeah. still getting up and go to work. Yeah. Right? They're still yeah. going out to dinner. Yeah. Right? They're still watching television. Yeah. They're still they're still listening to the rat tatio. They're still they're still doing things to entertain themselves, but it's their walk with God yeah. that begin you know, I don't I don't want to I don't feel like going to church today. I don't feel like this. You know everybody's sick. They have an outbreak. They have an outbreak. We didn't have an outbreak. We checked out. Almost everybody that got sick with COVID in our church got it somewhere, got it at different Everybody's places. Everybody's getting it. Five or six different people that had it got it in five or six different places. Yeah. All right? So the, the devil was just lying to some of y'all. And you listen. So can I tell you something? All Christians are being fought. All Christians are yes, being fought. We, yes, we are. And can I tell you something else? We're all being fought at a new level. A new level means a new devil. I said we're all being fought at a new level. This is a brand new warfare. This warfare we're in right now is to prepare you for the mark of the beast. It is to prepare you to surrender to Satan. Wow. It is to prepare you to give in. It is to prepare you to not be part of the very elect in the last days. True. It is to prepare you to fall away from God. This warfare that we're in is just, it's just a precursor to the things to come. It's just a precursor to what is getting ready to be unleashed from hell on the world. Amen? Amen. This new level has revealed a new devil. This oh. devil, I've been identifying him. I've been recognizing him and I've been seeing him. And he's nothing new, but he's a new devil to a lot of people. Right. He is a destroyer of joy. He is the thief of peace. He is the killer of abundant life. Yes, he is. You understand? Yep. And these are the things you can only get from God. You don't get joy from the world. You don't get peace, no. real peace, no. from the world. You don't get abundant life from the world. This devil comes not to take your happiness. He comes to steal your, to destroy your joy. He comes to destroy your joy. Yes. You understand? He comes to steal your peace. Not the peace that the world gives, the absence of war. He comes to steal the peace that God gives. Peace that surpasses understanding. Yes. Not as the world giveth peace, but God's peace. He comes to rob you of that. He comes to kill abundant life. He don't care about your life. You think the devil cares if you're a millionaire or a street sweeper? Uh -uh. You, think nope. he don't, you think he cares about... He, he comes to a still. He doesn't care about your life. He cares about your abundant life. Jesus didn't come to give you life. He came to give you abundant life. He came to give you life and that more abundantly. He didn't come just to give you life. You already had life. You were living the day your your you you know your mama conceived you. You yeah. were you were living right then. But he came God Christ came to give you abundant life. And this devil He's made manifest in all of this. He is, he is being manifest in all areas, man, in our social media, in the corporate media, and entertainment. He is manifest True. in education. True. He is manifest in government. Yep. All right? That's in it. jobs. He is the bearer of bad news. He is the bearer of fear. He is the bearer yep. of falsehood. He is a... The bearer of discouragement. Yes, he That's is. what he is. Yep. That's this devil we're fighting. While y'all are looking for the boogeyman, this boogeyman's been coming against you, ministering to you. I said he's been ministering to you. Yep. Look up the scripture, if you can, real quick, that of ministering spirits. 
just just somebody Google that ministering spirits. They're they're out. The the, the enemy sends ministering spirits. All right, and I can tell you that the devil's plan is to wear you down and wear you out. You understand? Yeah. That's his plan. He comes to wear you down and wear you out. This trial has come to wear you out. When the Bible says that the, the trials are come to work our faith and to work with patience, but the devil has come to wear you out with it. This trouble's come to wear you out. This pain has come to wear you down. This, this hardship has come to drain you. I just feel so drained. This sickness has come to slow you, to scare you. Are you hearing me? Yeah. To afflict you. It's come to afflict you. It's amazing how grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord can be spoken to you and ministering to you. But what we remember is, you know, hello, what we remember is how bad we feel. Hebrews chapter 1. All right? Verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. There it is. One more page. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? No, that's something different. All right? Um, maybe, no, no, maybe it's not. Let me read it. It's, it's in, it's in um, Hebrews 14. Hebrews 1 and 14. Let me read. It says, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Do not neglect salvation. There, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. That's it. For if the word spoken through angels prove, uh, proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? That's not the one I was talking about. But I will find it and, 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 and give it to you guys. Trials and trouble and pain and, and sickness and disease. Poverty. All the enemy has been having to do to, to God's people lately is just reveal the cost. And they're not willing to pay it. Just reveal the cost. It's going to cost you. Oh, well, Jesus paid the price. I shouldn't have to do anything. It's going to cost you. Oh, well, you know, salvation is free. Yeah, and then the rest costs your life. The walk of God costs you your life. Satan expects you to give up. This devil expects you to quit. Do you understand? He expects you to give up. He expects you to doubt God. He expects you to fear Him. He expects you to fear the government. He expects you to fear the world. He expects you to fear poverty. He expects you to fear... Are you hearing me? He expects you to fear loss. He expects you to... He, min, he ministers difficulty and he preaches distress. Wow. That's what he does. Yep. I said he ministers difficulty and he preaches distress. In 2 Timothy, Timothy was experiencing burnout, exhaustion. He was being worn down by the constant battle. There's, there's the word I'm looking for, that constant battle. That right. constant battle. He had forgotten what Paul had said to him here, that be, thou, be, not, there, be th not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, the affliction of the gospel. If you ain't being persecuted, you ain't, pre you ain't living it. If you're not being troubled, if you ain't, if, listen, if you're not against him, you're for him. How's that? If the devil's not coming after you, if he ain't working on you, if he's not bombarding you, if he's not attacking you, then you're working for him. That's all I got to say. You need to understand. And I said it earlier when I was talking about peace and joy, the thief, and all, but it's not peace and joy that he's after. He's after your eternity. Yes. You understand? Amen. He is after your eternity. He's after your walk with God. That's why we read that. That's why Paul writes to Timothy here. And verse 6 says, stir up. Verse 6 says, wherefore I put 
thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Stir it up. Stir it up, people. Stir it up. Stir up the gift of God. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Walk around your house and pray in the yes. Holy Ghost. Get in your car praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray in yes. tongues. Come on. Get on your face. Get on your hands and knees. Stand in front of the mirror. Brush your teeth and pray in tongues. Do Begin to stir up the gifts of God. Begin to stir up the gift of God in you. You got to do it. Quit asking somebody else to do it. Quit asking some preacher to preach you into a frenzy. You got to stir up the gift of God. God has not given you the spirit of fear, the spirit of dread, the, that frightfulness, that an, 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 anxiousness, that anxiety, that fear of life. We must begin to stir up the gift of God in us. Quit letting Satan stir up all the flesh, man. And start letting the gift of God come up in you. All of this warfare has a purpose. I'm going to let you talk, babe. Oh, I'm, I'm listening, babe. It's to drain your spirit. It's to rob you of zeal. It's to dry you out That's it. in the spirit. Yes. Huh? It's to dry up the living water that should be flowing out of your bellies. Amen. What you got flowing out of your belly lately? Murmuring and complaining, belly aching, huh? Talking about COVID, 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 COVID. Sick of it. It's drying you up, man. Let's start talking about Jesus, 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 Amen. Jesus, 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 the name above all names. Come on, let's start talking about Jesus. When somebody starts saying COVID, say, yeah, but Jesus, when COVID this, Jesus that, COVID this, Jesus that, doctors this, Jesus that, come on, government this, Jesus that. You need the living water. You need the word. You need to pray. Amen. You need to cry out, revive me, Holy Spirit. Revive yes, me. That's He's it. never left you nor forsaken you. Never revive has. me. Come alive in me, Holy Ghost. Come yes. alive in me. Come alive in me. Fill me up, God. Yes, Lord. Empower me again. Fill yes. me up. I'm not moving. I'm not getting up. I'm not saying another thing. I'm not going nowhere. Fill me up. The, word, the book of Psalms 119, the most, one of the famous chapters in the Bible, says, My soul clings to dust. Give me life according to your word. Now listen to that. My soul clings to the flesh. Wow. Dust. Wow. My soul clings to the flesh. Give me life. The word life there is a Hebrew word, zoe, spirit. Give me spirit according to your word. Wow. Get it in my soul. Get it in my soul. Because my soul is clinging to the dust. Help me, Holy Spirit. Give me yes. life. Yes. And that more abundantly. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor Beth. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Good word, Pastor. Good word. I mean, you know, the enemy, the, we know that the enemy's plan is distraction. And to, for us to focus on everything around us, to the media, to what's sure. going on, to, you know, oh, you hear what happened, you know what's going on. But we know what First Peter 5 and 8 says. It says... Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom he may. He, You're going to give him permission? He's devouring our minds today. He's filling it full of lies. He's filling this is what's going to happen. This is what you got to do. But can I say something? Don't let him in. Come Amen? On. God on. did not create us to live a distracted life. Do not let the noise from the world Come on. keep you from Amen. hearing Come on. the voice of God. Man. Amen? And I'm going to dissect this a little bit. I, uh, we've all read Romans. Filling the Holy Ghost, people. Come on. Romans 12, 2. And I'm going to let you. I, I begin to read this. And, and I've read it a hundred, a hundred Thank times. You, Jesus. But it says, I'm going to say it slow. Do not be conformed to this world. Come on. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That by testing, by testing, that you may discern what is the will of God. The will of God. Come on. What is good and acceptable and perfect. So in other words, the Lord is saying, do not be conformed to this world. This is not who we are. Not we don't we listen are. to the lies of the enemy and what's in the world. Amen. Do not be conformed. I keep hearing God say, do not be conformed. But we must transform 
by renewing our mind daily. Daily. He, he just didn't say right daily. now. Daily. Daily, people. By, daily. By testing you. Come on. May discern what is the will of God. What is the will of God? You're going to be tested. But what is the will of God? Let me tell you something. We're going to need to have that discernment. We're going to have to have that daily renewal of our mind. And what is good and acceptable and perfect? Why are we allowing the enemy to come and distract us? Amen. Or to, you know, to bring doubt or to bring, you know, uh, why we need to start learning to trust the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's it. Lean not on your own understanding. But acknowledge him. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Come on. We need to let him direct our path. And it says acknowledge him we, in all your ways. We need to get out of the way. That's right. Amen. Amen. But honestly, we must stay focused on the Lord. We must keep our eyes on Jesus and listen to what he's saying. Because the dangers of taking your eyes off Christ, and I'm going to be real fast, but if you, Matthew 14 says it all. And this, in 28, it says, and Peter answered to him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And so Jesus said, come, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, yeah. and he walked on the water to go to Jesus, but when he saw the wind... Are you hearing me? Was Busterius. He was Busters. afraid. He was afraid and he began to sink. His eyes were on the storm. Yeah. But he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Some of y'all need to be like yelling, Lord, save me right now. Why are we doubting? Why are we doubting? Jesus says, come. We need to come. Amen. Amen. We need to have big faith, not little faith. We don't need to be doubting. We need to. We don't need to be focusing on what's going around and what's on the storm. Amen. But let us focus on Him. Let's have that big faith. Amen. I trust the Lord with everything. Jesus says, "Come, come on, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest." That's it. I will come give to you me. rest. Come all to me. All of you who are weary. All of you who are burdened down, yes. come to me. Come Just to me. like he said to Peter. Come, come on. To me. Come on. Come, come, Peter. Come on. He's saying it to you tonight. That's what you need to do. Get your eyes off the world and get your eyes back on Jesus. Come on, let's get sold out yes, in these Lord. last days, man. Yes. Don't be don't be the ones that the Bible talks about that the very elect were deceived. Yes. Or if they could be. Right. Don't be part of the great falling away. And don't be part of the abomination. Come on, don't be part of of, of all of this crap that's going around. Be part of the kingdom of God. That's my challenge to you tonight. Yes. So some of you say, what do we do? Repent. Turn back to the Lord. Turn your heart back to the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen, come out and be with us on Sunday at Caswell Park. All you got to do is go down 99 towards Modesto or coming from Modesto or coming from tra whatever, wherever Stockton, you're coming from, Stockton, Manteca, Manteca Lathrop, and turn on Caswell and follow Caswell all the way to it dead Austin ends. Austin Road. I'm, I'm talking Austin Road to Austin Caswell. Austin Road yeah. to Caswell. Turn on Austin Road to Caswell. Follow it to Caswell. Caswell's not a road. It's a park. Austin Road all the way. We're going to see you guys out there at 10 a.m. We're going to be having a, a time of celebration. And uh, we're going to have some good church. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love you guys. God bless you. See you all here, there, or in the air. Amen.